Since the earliest days of Fortnite, tournament play has been prevalent all throughout the competitive community, and is arguably one of the main reasons Fortnite is as popular as it is. From Daquan's insane performance in the first ever Fortnite Invitational back in Season 2, to nowadays where pros like Booga, Mongrel, and Benji Fishy are dominating the competitive scene. What's up everybody, it's me, your host Dan. That's why today we decided to do a series where we analyze top tier clips straight from the pros and show you guys these little things that pros do that make all the difference. We're going to be taking a look at Benji Fishy, Tifu, and 72 Hours. All these players hold top placements for career earnings, which prove they're all phenomenal players. I'm a huge fan of theirs, and I'm sure you are too, so if you like this kind of video, hit like and subscribe for more of these. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuides.com, where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players. We're talking guys like you're going to see today, Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com and be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We really appreciate it. We can see here right at the start that Benji has weak loot and low materials and also has no shield. So you're probably thinking, why on earth would he be pushing someone off spawn like this? Well, we can make a few inferences. First, there are 92 people left. This shows that the game most likely just started and that the player is probably in a worse spot than Benji. Secondly, we can see from the first shot that Benji hit him for white health, which means the opponent is below 100 HP. Considering all of this, Benji decides to go in for the kill and it works out in his favor. Next, we have a clip of Benji in mid game, getting RP G spammed. His first instinct here is to set up in another box and scope out the situation. He sees that the opponent who RPG spammed him gets lasered really hard. If you listen closely, you can hear the sound of his shield cracking, indicating that he's under 100 HP. Benji hears this and immediately starts to spam the opponent with his AR. But wait, he starts to get grenade spammed. Benji immediately jumps out of the box and spam builds while covering himself. Once the nade spam slows down, he decides to disengage from the middle of the fight and get rid of the low opponent. This is a great idea because 1. There were two opponents who both knew where he was and what he was doing, and there was a good chance that he could get double teamed in this current position. Also, they were all toward the edge of the zone and will likely have to run pretty far to reach the next circle. He had to get out quickly, and stalling wasn't going to help him do this. With all this in mind, Benji uses the third party advantage to push the already weak opponent. He knows this guy's trying to stay alive and won't notice Benji sneaking up on him. He wipes him out with a clean pump shot to the face. Now he's in a 1v1 situation. He immediately realizes the opponent has tons next to one of his walls. This is a great example of the superhuman awareness that pros have. He immediately realizes this, edits the wall, and scores a quick pump shot. Seeing how his opponent was already on white health, he dives in for the kill and gets it with ease. Now, let's skip to the end game. Benji spots an opponent on the other side of the zone, trying to make his way in. Seeing this opponent, we can infer that he's most likely low on health since he's on edge zone and trying desperately to get in. Having made this observation, Benji decides to pop a few shots and actually scores a pretty easy kill because of it. Benji's still sitting nicely on high ground, going into the half and half circles with great materials and and loot to back it up. This is a perfect opportunity for him to grab a few easy kills. First, he spots an opponent tunneling in, not quite in zone yet. He pops a few shots, but when the opponent reacts and builds, he decides it's not worth it. Always remember that there are tons and tons of people in the lobby, and tunnel visioning on one person is often the reason pros die. Next, out of the corner of his eye, he sees another player on the edge struggling to get in. He decides this target is vulnerable and goes for a few shots, scoring another kill. One great thing about high ground is that you can easily look down and spot people struggling to get into the zone and pop easy shots on him. Uh oh, Benji gets a terrible sixth zone and has to go the furthest out of anyone in the entire lobby. His first instinct is to get his rotation going early. If you have to go far, always make a point to go early so you don't get caught on the edge like so many players already have in this game. One thing to note here is Benji's rotation route. He tries to stay in good position, utilizes other players' builds to move more efficiently, while also building ramps and walls to protect himself from an unexpected edit or shot. Here's where Benji makes a fatal mistake. He edits out to get further into zone, but he goes straight into an opponent's floor. The opponent edits on him and scores an easy shot, putting him at 58 HP. Immediately, Benji disengages, knowing he'll die if he fights his opponent, pops a flopper fish, and starts tunneling in. This was a great recovery, and it's important to remember that fighting isn't always the answer, just like it wasn't the answer here. Here's what ultimately leads to Benji's death. While he's healing up, he fails to keep track of what's around him, and an opponent sneaks up with an SMG and lasers him, almost instantly killing him. Always make sure to pay close attention to your surroundings. While this game may not have ended in Benji's favor, it was still a great game, scoring him from 60 to 70 points, a 10 point jump. The three things to take away from this game are to always pay close attention to what's happening around you, play for positioning on your rotations while also covering yourself from potential shots, and to play for high ground in later zones to grab some easy kills on people trying to rotate in. 
This next clip from Tfue's FNCS run shows a lot about how to dominate in squads. First, we can see that Tfue's squad is on high ground. High ground is absolutely crucial in squad tournaments, since kills are much more important than placement for squad tournaments. Wiping out two other squads is equal to getting top two. So let's watch Tfue in action. To start off, we can see how they utilize a kill-oriented playstyle from the start, with Tfue carrying an RPG and abusing it as much as possible. Tfue hits a beautiful shot on four people. This is a great example of why explosives are so so darn OP. Staying on height with an RPG is the easiest way to guarantee yourself some eliminations in squads, and while Tifu didn't get any kills from this, he could have easily gotten lucky right there with a few of the opponents being low. Our following Tifu clip once again showcases them on high ground. Seriously, if you want to learn one thing from Tifu's squad, it's to always hold height in squads. They spot a team on low ground east of them trying to rotate into the zone. They seek out this opportunity since they're edge zone and not likely to get third party. Tifu hits a beautiful snipe on one of the opponents. Knowing that they won't get third party, they decide to spray these opponents from above, and while the other three disengage, they get an easy finish, scoring them a point, a bunch of materials, and potentially some better loot. Tifu sees enemies rotating into zone, and these enemies are already getting sprayed by multiple teams. They jump on this opportunity, and Tifu calls out for everyone to spray. Since they're on good position and join in on a pinch, they get a few easy kills and some quick points. Once they get the elimination, since they're now low on ammo, they go for the push. They already know this team is in shambles and most likely have low health and materials, so this is a pretty obvious fight to take. However, the zone pops up and they're right in the middle, so now they have to make a decision. Do they fight these opponents for three more points or play for high ground and positioning to potentially get more points? What would you do? Would you take the three easy points but risk poor position? Or would you push for height, which is pretty much free? Well, Tifu and his squad decide that instead of taking this fight, they're going to play for high ground and play the long game instead of risking it on the bottom. We can immediately see the positive results of this decision, Tifu gets a nice laser on someone on low ground, and they have the ultimate position on the entire lobby, free to rain terror on everyone else. Overall, the great decision making and decision to hold height led to Tifu's squad getting an insane 29 point game. If there's anything you should remember from this game, it's to play for high ground in squads, and to try to carry explosives whenever possible. The combination of high ground position and explosive power they utilized during this game is what ultimately resulted in that awesome win. This next game is a real treat. To start off, we have 72 hours of squad holding high ground, just like every smart squad does, with 11 players left in the 7th or 8th circle. 72 hours sees an opponent right below him and hits him for over 100. He immediately continues shooting, knowing that this opponent is most likely a solo. Also, he marks the opponent and tells the squad to back him up. Since this opponent is on mid ground but still above everyone else, they're not really risking a loss of high ground by fighting this guy. So, with all this in mind, Tom jumps down on the opponent. However, he sees that it's a full squad. What would you do here? Would you take this fight and try to wipe out the squad, or would you back off and hold your high ground? Well, Tom decides that instead of taking a fight against the full squad and risking this awesome game, he's going to stay back with the squad and play high ground. This was easily the best choice. He goes on to fight another day. Although this game has been great, here's where Tom makes a fatal mistake. Instead of holding height with his team, he decides to go down and take a fight against a guy on low ground. This ultimately results in his death. If there's one thing to take away from this fight, it's to never give up great position for one kill. Although Tom's squad played a great game and came really close, they ultimately did come short of the win. However, this is a great game to learn from, as they made many great decisions and a few poor ones that you can utilize and learn from when you play squads. Overall, the number one thing to take away from this game is to always focus on holding height and playing as a team, and don't run off into your own fights without your squad being close by. These three games are some great examples of how pros make so many seemingly tiny decisions that make up their game. Reviewing and analyzing pro gameplay can really teach you a lot about the game and things you should and shouldn't be doing. The main takeaways from Benji's game include to focus on maintaining good position while you rotate, to always stay super aware of your surroundings, and to try and hold height in solos to get picks on the edge of zone. The main takeaway from Tifu's game are that position is often more important than easy kills, and that carrying explosives is absolutely crucial in competitive squads. Finally, the main takeaways from Tom's game are to always hold height in squads and to play as a team, not separating from each other for kills. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDE when you make any sort of purchases in the Fortnite shop as it really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought about this video and what you'd like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Once again, it's your host Dan. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Ammerman and we'll see you guys in the next one.